So you'd like to think that when you purchase a printer, everything will go according to plan. Well, even the best printers on the market can run into issues from time to time. Hello everyone, Ezra from E&E Design here. Today we're going to be updating and customizing one of our original Prusa i3 Mark III's by using both manufacturer updates and community designs. If you don't have a Prusa printer, don't worry. While we're using this printer as an example, the process we're going through can actually apply to any 3D printer from any manufacturer. We've had two Mark III's since early December 2017, and since then, the Prusa research team has already updated quite a few of its 3D printed parts. Some of these updates are slight adjustments, and others are pretty big improvements over the original designs. They've also improved the software and firmware as well. We purchased these printers because they're extremely reliable and have exceptional print quality. And though the Mark III is great, like any product, there are some improvements that can be made. While we could mock up and iterate our own designs here, this video will cover where you can look before doing so. Your printer manufacturer is always a good place to start. However, the amount of information they put out depends greatly on the company's business practices. Some companies use completely proprietary designs and choose to put little to no information out in the world besides maybe a user's manual. On the opposite side of the spectrum, some companies choose to be open source, meaning they're completely transparent and put every last bit of information online about their products. Most of the time, they even include engineering drawings used in manufacturing these products. Thankfully, the 3D printing market has evolved in the past decade or so and has really been pushing for open source. Open source is very beneficial to the end user as you can learn more about how a product was made and adjust and improve the designs yourself. This drive from both the companies and the communities pushes the market forward much faster than, say, a market that is constricted by companies protecting their designs. Going to your printer manufacturer's website is the fastest and easiest way to find the latest information on your printer. If your manufacturer doesn't have a significant amount of information on their website, the next place I'd recommend going for help is the community. If you're part of social media, there are typically Facebook groups for every printer. These are great places to ask questions and get near immediate feedback. Also, one of the most common places where upgrades and modifications are hosted is called Thingiverse.com, which we'll cover later in this episode. For the Mark III, we can go straight to the manufacturer's website and find the firmware and driver section with all the latest software. They also have a section here where you can download all of the 3D printed parts for each printer generation they have. While Prusa's website is handy for getting the latest packages of software and parts, it does not go into detail on what was updated with each new package of 3D printed parts. So the question is then, how are you supposed to know which parts have been updated and not? We can take this question to the website GitHub. This is basically a file depository that is used for the creation and iteration of products. Thanks to the amazing open source community and the fact that Prusa is part of this, we can go here and easily find everything we need for this printer. Just like Prusa's website, there are sections on here for each printer generation. In our case, we're going to find the Mark III section and look for the 3D printed parts. As you can see here, we have a list of all the 3D printed parts that make up the Mark III. Next to each part's name, we have a description and then finally a date. Notice that the dates show that some of these parts are newer than others. This is the first indication of a part's age. Another way we can investigate the life cycle of a part is by clicking on its description. We can now see a 3D representation of the X-end idler and the X-end motor parts that were involved in this update. Notice that we have a wireframe representation of these parts and that there are some colored sections as well. Basically, anything that is red or green is where something was changed. If we click on the revision slider here, we can get a more real-world visual of how these two versions would look. By sliding it back and forth, we can see that these parts were overhauled with this update. Now if we go back, we can go through the list and determine which parts we'd like to print the updates for. Screw and nut tolerances are more ease of assembly related, so we're not so worried about that. But these parts that have these big changes here are related to functionality and really should be updated to help with our printer's longevity. And though it's nice to know which parts have been updated, for this video we'll be reprinting every part on the Mark III so we can use a custom colored filament and make this printer more unique. First, let's spice up this printer and add some multicolor parts. 
This is where the Thingiverse community can be very helpful, as there are many generous users out there who have likely thought the same thing you have and uploaded their designs. I found these two designs by the user Sippus, who makes some really great designs. Next, I'd like to add a filament guide of some sort to keep the filament on the spools when printing. This problem is especially noticeable when using smaller spools, as the filament has a tendency to unwind itself from the spool and potentially cause a jam. The user Area 51 has made two designs here that I'd like to try out. Now there's also the small issue I have with the Mark III from time to time when I'm unloading filament. The filament can get stuck in the upper PTFE tube section, and I have to pull the top cover off of the extruder to get it out. The latest firmware on the printer reminds you with an audible beep to remove the filament immediately after unloading it, and I think this is directly related to the problem. Basically, if you don't pull the filament out immediately while it's still warm, it can cool and harden in an irregular shape and then be very difficult to pull through the top PTFE tube. Once again, the user Area 51 is here to help with their toolless design for the top cover. If jammed, you can just unscrew the top plug and pull the filament out with the top PTFE tube, fix the issue, and then easily reinstall. How cool is that? Finally, when moving the Mark III, its feet tend to want to fall off. This is especially prominent when sliding it across the surface. The user Area 51 has also made a simple clip system that snaps around the feet to keep them in place. This sums up the list of parts we'll be adding to this printer for now. As time goes on, there may be more things will change, but overall, not much, as there isn't a lot to complain about with this printer. I'd say the last thing I'd like to add is stackable smart enclosures, but we'll leave that for a future episode. So compiling this list of parts and preparing it for printing, we need to select a filament to use. I've gone and picked up some various PETG colors from 3DX Tech, and I've chosen their transparent amethyst. I've examined the current parts from the Mark III, and it appears Perusa Research printed them with two perimeters, two top and bottom layers, and something around 10% infill. And I know that this will increase weight slightly, but I'd like to do three perimeters, three top and bottom layers, with 30% cubic infill to increase strength and rigidity. Note that an increase in weight, especially on the X and Y axes, can affect the print quality. Also, as Perusa Research has said, the laser sensor does not work well with lighter colored parts surrounding it, so we'll have to use a standard black PTG or ABS filament. I'm very happy with how the Prusa parts print. These designs don't require any support material which makes cleanup super easy. The PETG from 3DX Tech also printed beautifully as usual. Again, I can't recommend them enough. Now that the parts are done, let's get to assembly.
we now have ourselves an updated and upgraded Prusa Mark III that looks the part. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can look forward to more videos down the road. If you would like to see more on this topic, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, as usual, you can find all the necessary links related to this video in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time on EE Design.